Welcome to our Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Ralph Jacobson. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And I'm Christopher Fan Kaufman. And today we are looking at February 5th of the Narrative Lectionary, which uh, is uh, entitled The Golden Rule. We'll be looking at Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 14, and then 24 through 29, as we continue looking at the fullness of the Sermon on the Mount, uh, as we are familiar with it. And um, we're going to take a look uh, in chapter 7, um, beginning with uh, that... Um, that uh, caution on not to judge so that you are not judged. What a great way to start the text. Yeah. And you know, boy, it's, uh, I hear a lot of sermons lately Mm. that didn't take this verse into account, including a sermon I heard yesterday, but I won't go into that because, but a lot of judging. Oftentimes, in the name of those people are judgmental, I'm judging them. I think that I'm always, whenever I think about this verse, always so appreciative that Jesus continued. He didn't say, do not judge so that you may not be judged. And then the next one, which always at least gives me pause, the measure you give will be the measure you get. I think that there are times when we think that we are more generous than we are. And to be reminded that it is uh, perhaps not the case to continue on and to say, as harshly as you are thinking and you are judging, that is as harshly as you will be judged, is a, is a powerful addition to that simple advice not to judge. So I'm always thankful uh, to be reminded of that verse. Very much so. And uh, that that is, is very similar to what I was going to say in, in just being aware uh, that this is, th- there are many ways in which those who have become the judge, as you referenced, Ralph, are doing exactly what they are supposed to be criti- criticizing, that they have, um, that they have become, uh, that they have perfected what it is they are saying other people should not be doing. Uh, and uh, so I, I appreciate, Christopher, your noting that Jesus Jesus is rather clear here. And even if you um, skip over the ask part for a moment, because I know we, that we love that you can ask and you get. Um, but when we jump down to verse 12, it fits in everything you do to others as you would have them do to you. Um, so how much judgment do you want to receive when you start thinking about uh, judging others? And if we we see this, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, as we see this as a trajectory of, of the attitude of the, of the people who represent Christ, this fits with what it means in the Lord's Prayer to forgive us as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. Um, I wanted to pick up the so-called golden rule uh, uh, for a minute. Um, It's uh, as the note in my study Bible says, you know, uh, um, this is known in many different versions in religions. Um, My my favorite, uh, my favorite Talmudic uh, story uh, to quote and, This is something you can do in your children's sermon or actually in the regular sermon, uh, which is what I often do, which is um, a non-believer goes to Rabbi Shammai, right? Because in the uh, in the Talmud, you got two major schools. Shammai, he's the crabby one for the crabby coffee shop drinkers, uh, which is where I go. And the guy says, teach me to recite the entire Torah while standing on one foot and I will become believer. And it says Shammai hits him with his cane. And says, go away. Then he goes to Rabbi Hillel, the sort of generous of the rabbinic schools, and says the same thing. Teach me to recite the entire Torah while on one foot, and I will become a believer. And he says, that which is hateful to you, do not do to another. Now, I, I've at times had congregations stand up as able, stand on one foot because I'm in a wheelchair. Uh, this is a funny thing for me to do. Uh, and... Uh, 
And then it says, the rest is commentary, now go and study. And people often forget that. So what is the golden rule? Do unto others or don't do unto others, uh, whether positive, negative version. But now go and study. What does that actually look like? Thanks for that. I didn't know that story. Oh, no, I, I was going to uh, echo something that you had brought up when we talked about the Lord's Prayer joy, because I think it applies to this passage and what Rolf was just saying, is that when thinking about this judging and thinking about this golden rule, there's a way in which it is, as with the Lord's Prayer, a sign of dependence that the reason that we don't judge is because we know that we need somebody to judge us less harshly than we deserve. Uh, that And so by, by taking on this stance or by taking on this golden rule type relation to other people, it is a, an acknowledgement of the, our dependence and the forgiveness that has already been extended to us not an acknowledgement of how good we are at forgiving or how good we are at not judging or so forth. And so I just, I thought that that's something that bears wow. repeating because it's a theme that goes yes. throughout the Sermon on the Mount. So here's a question I have for you both. So the, uh, we, we talk, uh, this is our third week in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, the, the longest, uh, a uh, sustained sermon in the gospel of Matthew. Although as, as Joy pointed out very helpfully two weeks ago, Clearly, as Jesus went from town to town teaching, as it says he did, he, he, he obviously would have told these parables and these insights and these lessons multiple times. So, but of course, the gospel is just going to give it to us once, the, uh, each story once. But so the, the Sermon on the Mount begins with the Beatitudes as a commentary on who are these people that are coming to Jesus for salvation. But it ends with this. Everyone who hears these words will be like the wise one who built his house on the rock. And then it says the rain fell, right? And uh, it, um, in the parable, the wise person builds his house upon the rock, which, is, which are the teachings of Jesus, as opposed to the foolish one who builds a house on the sand and the foundations wash away. What does it mean then at the close? What does it mean to you? That this is the closing. This is the uh, this is the ribbon on the package. The uh, the uh, cherry on the ice cream sundae of the Sermon on the Mount. It means I need to go have lunch right now with those images. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough one because I am teaching on Matthew in the spring, and so I've been thinking a lot about the Sermon on the Mount and what it means. One of the things that I think is so life-giving about the Sermon on the Mount, when you think about the rock that's built on, I, I, I appreciate that you link that to Jesus' teaching, Rolf, but I also think that it's important to extend that back. This is a discussion on the Torah and the way in which God has given to the people of Israel a long history, a solid foundation of stories and teachings and sermons on the way in which God relates to God's people, the love of God, the faithfulness of God, the steadfastness of God. And so I, I think I, when I think about that, I don't want to overemphasize the building part, but want to overemphasize the solidness of the rock that's being built on. It's not about the construction. It's not a three little pigs story. It's not that one built from brick and the others built from uh, straw or sticks. It's the foundation that's built on. You know, if you, as you said uh, a little bit ago, if you build the strongest house on a cliffside and the rains come, it'll still fall down. So really to point towards the foundation and not to the house itself. And you're, you're extending when Jesus says these words of mine, that they are an extension in uh, harmony, not necessarily, or at least in uh, accord with the Torah and the word of the Old Testament. Yeah, no, I think Jesus makes that abundantly clear. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking of Christopher sharing with us uh, uh, as we began uh, talking about this to, 
uh, see the image of Moses. Uh, I like to to remind us that um, sometimes when we're talking to someone who doesn't share our faith, uh, that um, we can start with describing this as an ancient wisdom that when any culture has adopted it, has proved to be a firm foundation. And so, uh, Christopher, as you were talking about the foundation, I I have to admit, I started going to the epistles and and um, uh, I think uh, even um, the commentary uh, uses on Christ the solid rock, I stand. And, and that foundation imagery, um, I'm not going to say it better than Christopher did, but that's exactly... I, I, I let you go first because I thought I was going to be able to say, here's the answer. But that was exactly where I was going. What is this foundation? What is this solid rock? So just very something very brief about rocks. I live in a house with a stone foundation. And one of the things, if you ask a structural engineer, a stone foundation actually lasts for a long, long time compared to concrete. That there are ways in which modern technology has not solved some of these problems. I think it's a good metaphor that this ancient stone foundation uh, is not easily replaced. <laughs>